This is DIY Mushroom Tech with Chapter 2.1. Now you will learn how to create agar plates for cloning. Since this project is multilayered, I decided to take an unusual approach. I produced this video in a way that it can also be used as a printout. That means you can use it offline or even use just print some single pages of it. All the design that are shown can also be downloaded. My name is Daniel, I am from Germany, and I will be your host. Let's get practical. Please note, that creating agar plates is the most complex part in growing mushrooms. You need a lot of materials and equipment. But if you understand how the process works it becomes quite easy. So do not be afraid. In this video I will explain how cloning is performed by using agar plates. First, I will give you the recipe, then show you the process with photos, explain some things in detail with the video and finally end this lecture with the bill of materials. Cloning will become very easy for you. Before we start, I did put a lot of work into this lecture series. I hope you enjoy it. Maybe you want to consider to buy me a coffee? There is a serious reason why I ask. In life there is balance everywhere. Summer and winter, day and night, hot and cold, and so on. It's obviously natural, that taking and giving is also a polarity that needs to be in balance. Only when there is balance can we, as humans, achieve harmony and genuine happiness. That means, if you take something for example from the internet, you should also give something back. Please check for yourself if your life is in balance. If you want, you can support me with a donation. That would be great. You could also support any other good project. Send someone a smile, leave somewhere a nice comment, or just be joyous and spread some love. Let us start with the recipe for the creation of agar plates. First, you cook some potatoes. Cut them in small pieces, so the water can break the structure better down. Filter the soup afterwards. Second, you add some agar, dextrose, beer yeast, and some water. This is added, to have ensure enough food for the mycelium. Third, you give it some heat. Be careful, that it does not overboil. Fourth, you let it cool down. It should not go below 40 to 50 degrees Celsius. At that temperature the agar will solidify. While it is still fluid, you pour it into ice cube bags. The recipe was too fast. Let's investigate the process in detail. This is an overview. Cooking, then cool down, filling the bags. This is the first part. The bags can be stored in the freezer for month. The cloning part can be performed whenever. You prepare the petri dish, sterilize it, after cloning that means inoculating happens. The agar base will be sealed off with plastic wrap. Then you wait for full colonization. We will discuss the creating of the agar base first. You cook some potatoes. Cut them in small pieces, so the water can break the structure better down. Filter the soup afterwards. Add some agar, dextrose, beer yeast, and some water. This is added, to have ensure enough food for the mycelium. Let it simmer for 3 minutes. Be careful, that it does not overboil. Finally you let it cool down. It should not go below 40 to 50 degrees Celsius. At that temperature the agar will solidify. While it is still fluid, you pour it into ice cube bags. Please buy some quality ice cube bags. The brand Dose Not Matter. 
If you fill it too hot, the bag will not function properly, no matter of the brand. Lift the end off the bag a little bit to ensure proper closing. You do not need to use bags. You can also pour it directly into a petri dish. When you have finished your agar run, you can move on to cloning. Now there can be a time gap. I do use this very often. As I am no professional, I sometimes have a one or two month break. The mycelium does not need much substrate. Make sure that you the ground is completely covered. I place three agar ice cubes in one petri dish. It depends on the size of the petri dish you use. Make sure, that your stove is level. Otherwise you do not get good agar distribution within the dish. Make sure your pressure cooker is cooking in a clean environment. During cool down, the air contracts. That means, external air is sucked into the interior. That is why I chose to do outdoor cooking. This is not a must. Before I cook successful indoor. Always cover your substrate within the pressure cooker. This way is most sustainable way. An easy way is to use aluminum foil, as you will see in the after next picture. There I did put it over grain jars. I generally cook petri dishes about 2 hours at maximum pressure. 14 to 15 psi would be best. As my fissler does not show the pressure, I always use the second indicator marking ring. Always put enough water in your pressure cooker. Fill it up, until the water level nearly reaches the steam basket. Do not let it run dry. I normally do the cooking in the morning or at noon. Before I go to bed, I take the time to process the cooked goods. Otherwise, they can be too hot. Agar is heat sensitive. If it gets too hot, it will not solidify afterwards. The result will be a kind of slime. It does still work for growing mycelium on it, but it will be very difficult to transfer to grain substrate afterwards. If you combine agar with wood or grain substrate, you cannot go over one bar. That means, you need to cook longer. This is picture is only for demonstration. From now on you need to work very hygienic. Wear clean cloths. Use a FFP3 mask. Wear gloves and a cappy. Disinfect your ends with ethanol. Use a still air box to do the inoculation. I used a box from a local hardware store. Cut in two holes so that you can put your hands inside. I also added some covers. During inoculation, I lift them. Their purpose is only to keep it closed, when the box is not used. I spray it with ethanol slash isopropanol disinfect it. Then I let it sit for 30 minutes. I always use ethanol, as it is a lot cheaper in Europe. When everything is ready, I place the needed parts within the box. Agar plates. Mushrooms for samples. Plastic wrap for sealing. One third of a top its product. Disinfect the knife with a blow torch. After it is shimmering red, I deter it with ethanol. Be careful of not starting a fire. The primary way to start agar mycelium is to cut out a part of a fruiting body. Tear the mushroom into two parts and take out a fresh uncontaminated piece of mushroom flesh. The piece does not need to be big. Just put it in the middle of the petri dish. Be careful not to contaminate the agar during the process. Seal it with plastic wrap. Wait for the mycelium to grow. For sealing I use plastic wrap. It is for kitchen usage. 
just cut it into parts with the size of about 6 to 8 centimeters. I created a do-it-yourself box for storing the boxes at a higher than room temperature. In another video I will show you how to create this box. To use this box is optional. I normally save the heating money and just wait a little bit longer. Just go with your normal room temperature. Mark the date and the generation of the cloning. Number 2 stands for second time agar to agar transfer. Do transfer too often from agar to agar. The quality will deteriorate with each transfer. Start new with a fresh piece of a fruit body. I always document my activities. Red for agar. Green for grain. I use rye. Yellow for wood. I use oak. You can also track your gas usage and your cleaning cycles. As you noticed I mostly cook oak. This can be quite easily explained. Agar to grain ratio is 1 to 4. Grain to wood ratio is 1 to 1. With one agar run, one can produce a large amount of agar petri dishes. When you go for grain, I can cook simultaneous grain jars. As I can only fit two wood bags in my pressure cooker, I do have to cook most of the time sawdust bags. After full colonization is achieved by the mycelium, you can use the dish. I normally store it in the fridge for when I need them. If you do not take enough agar ice cubes you will have a not so good result. Here I only took one. If you have contamination, toss the plate immediately. Do not tolerate any contamination. In the upcoming video I will show you the cloning process. Start by ensuring a hygienic environment. Clean the still air box in advance. Apply some ethanol to disinfect. Use a knife. Disinfect before using it. After opening the pressure cooker, work very clean. Always spray your hand. Wear a mask and a cappy. Put the petri dishes inside the still air box. Sterilize the knife. Be careful of fire hazard. Ethanol burns. Heat the knife up until it lights up red. This takes always some time. Do not be hasty. When the front part of the knife is red you can cool it down with ethanol again.
I used an older petri dish. Normally they are easy to open. If you put a little piece into a new petri dish, only open it a little bit, so that you can put the knife in. When you are ready, seal it. For sealing use the inner part of the foil, and not the outer. Try to be as sterile as possible. Practice makes the master.
The process went fine. No contamination. Growth speed depends on strain. After the petri dish is fully colonized, I store them in a regular fridge. Now we will have a conclusive look at which materials you need. You need the organic materials to create the agar base. And you will need the equipment. All the items have been shown previously. For cooking I use two devices. A standard kitchen pressure cooker. Diameter is 28 cm. Capacity is 10 liter. I always use two steam baskets. This pressure cooker is a little bit bigger and goes up to 3 bar. It takes a little bit more time to open and close it but works great. I mainly use it for grain and wood cooking, because I can fit more into it. I got it very cheap second hand. I always use gas for cooking, as it is the cheapest way. Cook outside if possible. Always regard the safety requirements. These boxes I bought and equipped with my do-it-yourself heating device. Purely optional. Here you see the heating device. Works great. Still there is an update pending. You will soon find this do-it-yourself build in the Technic section of my course. That was it. I hope you enjoyed the way I create my agar dishes. What is your preferred agar recipe? Please post it in the comments. Do you have other helpful hints for your fellow man? Please do contribute. Remember, always be kind. Think before you post. There is enough hate out there. Share some love. What is up next you are wondering. Next, we will use the produced agar mycelium to inoculate some grain. Yes, that is right, we will produce some grain spawn. The next lecture will be structured in the same manner as this one was. Thanks for sharing your time with me. I hope you learned something new. Happy agar plating and see you soon. Goodbye, and over and out from Germany.